I remember my memories of 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 people laughing uh, or finding something I did funny are so crystal clear, and I've forgotten huge chunks of my life. You know, uh, not because of drug use or anything like that, just because they've just faded out into the background. But I remember clearly being in the schoolyard and I had found a cane and I was doing some bits with it, some shtick, and I crossed one leg over the other, knocking the cane out accidentally, a la Chaplin, and fell over and a bunch of kids laughed. That is in 3D high def in my mind and I can't remember my wedding day. So uh, <laughs> this is the sadness of the whole thing. But I remember very clearly thinking, oh, that's the way through. That's how I'll make it. Yeah, and to, to our earlier point about certainty, the, this, this moment that you're describing, I think has been characterized as uh, like sometimes as epiphany or connection or meeting the daemon or the spirit or the jinn, just in some moment recognizing this is who I am, this is what I'm about. I'm not just um, a featureless Celtic kabuki fella. I am a, <laughs> a, a, a man with purpose and an, and an ability to carry off a admittedly plagiarized physical piece of comedy. Yes, well, but from one of the greats, uh, Charlie Chaplin, so I'll do that. Uh, you know, um, yeah, it's funny because I have a very vivid memory of the first time I met you. Uh, you were becoming a very talked about uh, comedian and you came on my uh, late night show in New York, in New York, and I had seen clips of you performing, and I thought, well, he's very funny and he's very different. And I went backstage just before you came out to say hello, and you were pacing like a lion in a cage. You were pacing, and uh, you know some comedians have almost a, a eerie detachment, and you were you were worked up into a state and you were pacing and you came out and you perched on the furniture and you were so in the moment and it was hilarious. It was really funny and exciting, but I remember thinking this guy approaches this in this life or death way that uh, I find compelling and that I like and I prefer this to the kind of casual guy puts out his cigarette, walks out there, does his thing. I don't know if you have, if, if that was the way you always were backstage, but I remembered that moment very clearly. <clears throat> Even to live in the memory of a man like you is a, a great honor. I nearly, I nearly wept at your recollection there just to feel that uh, revivified. I, I do remember that. And it was a real big deal to go on your show and to come over to like to be coming to your country and to sort of, I remember that feeling of burgeoning fame, that feeling of, transcendence what i didn't know then and do know now but i'm sort of struggling to accept is that the kind of architecture and accolades of fame mimic something that is real a kind of self-actualization a self-realization a kind of connection like you with your story with your cane when you was a kid i felt very connected to comedy it's but it felt like something that's always been there for me always been real for me and has made being who I am something bearable and like something that you know it's been hard I've felt you know like amidst the narcissism and the self-aggrandizing shtick I've been you know like had a lot of mental health issues and mm -hmm. drug issues which I've obviously banged on about and metastasized into all sorts of frankly money but like uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, it's been lucrative <laughs> <You're>, look, <laughs> Russell, Russell 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 all of us I mean first of all you shouldn't feel bad about that you have you have made your pain lucrative you have and and that is the essence of what we do <laughs> I've had some very lucrative mental illnesses over yes. the years. <laughs> I know I've, men I've mentioned this before, Russell, but my father, who is a very smart guy and a scientist, uh, I think a few years into my late night show, uh, and this is after years and years of me, him seeing me work this stuff out, uh, he said to me, and he wasn't making a joke, he just said, I see, I see you're making your living off of something that should probably be treated. 
<laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't being funny. He was I mean, people think, oh, your dad's funny. No, no, he wasn't being funny. He was giving a very frank analysis mm. of of what this was. And I know that uh, I know that for you, you've been through like you, you've been very frank about all the things that you've that you've been through, uh, which I think, uh, you know, you have a choice that you can make at some point, which is clearly there are people in our business that keep they have these issues and they just keep throwing blankets and pillows on top of it, just trying to stifle it. And that's addiction, that's outlandish, insane behavior, uh, or else you grapple with it and you try and see, does this lead to anything else? Uh, I, it's sad, but I, the mm -hmm. sentence I was gonna say, does this lead to more funny stuff? When I should have said, does this lead to peace and inner calm? But instead, I was really about to say, hey, Let's examine this pain because maybe there's more funny stuff there, which is a sad thing to say. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? This pursuit of content, the pursuit of more material, more jokes. I, I love it and it can get a little bit frenetic and frenzied, the pursuit of that. But I feel that, um, my, you know, that phrase Buddha nature, like that everyone has a Buddha nature. Don't you sometimes when you meet people think, I wonder how they'd be as a priest or a rabbi or an imam or whatever the thing they're into is. I sometimes right. sense it about people that there's there's a version of them that if they were to strip back the appurtenances of their cultural identity would radiate out and I think in that moment of pacing around backstage trying to find who I was as a inverted commas performer I got close to oh this is who you are essentially the challenge I think comes it, 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 as a result of us living in a fully immersive fundamentalist ideological system that can never and it makes sense this be declared as such because it's horizonless you can never identify capitalist consumerism as a kind of uh extremist ideology in the same way that you would be able to identify communism or an extremist religious ideology because it's everywhere it's it's all encompassing everything you do becomes monetizable like and I, I, as a person that was really famous for a little bit it was weird to be caught in that tundra in that tunnel in that you know because and i still sometimes want it i still sometimes think wow oh, you should be a bit more famous, actually. You should be being in more films on some bigger posters and stuff. And then I remember it actually made me feel physically sick and ill the whole time. But, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do with these drives anymore, man. Yeah, but that's that that is I mean, that's worth mining right now because, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's much different. It's probably no different in England, but I'll tell you, as you know, here in the United States, everybody's obsessed with the concept of fame. Everybody's, uh, I, I've met so many people over the years that have said, I wanna do what you do, or I wanna be famous. We've all had the feeling of, uh, um, should I need more of this? Should, uh, where am I in relationship to other people? And, the one thing that I almost feel is like my duty as a human being <laughs> is to try and tell as many people as I can that uh, there's plenty of nice things about uh, plenty of nice things about my life that I really like, but mm -hmm. um, fame in and of itself is a clear uh, broth with absolutely no nutrition. There's no, there's no nutrition in it. There's no protein, there's no carbohydrates, there's no amino acids, there's nothing. And when people get addicted to that, there's a reason why a lot of them die <laughs> when they're 45, because it doesn't go anywhere. It's, it feels stupid. Uh, and the, um, you know, there's small little nice things of, oh, I think I got a table in a restaurant faster than I would have were I not a recognizable uh, uh, Kabuki Irishman, but no, other than that, I think it's this, it's very, and it's very hard to get people to understand that. Uh, mm. and, and I've met so many people who've said, oh, I'm interested in doing what you're doing. And to me, that should mean that you're interested in making people laugh. You're interested in making stuff. You're make, you know, I say it's as simple as I like to make stuff. And then there's this byproduct of making stuff and some of it's nice and some of it's not so nice. But when people get just obsessed with, no, 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 I just want everyone to know who I am. 
I think, well, there's a lot of pain that, <laughs> that goes with that drive and, and a lot of dissatisfaction and you can never fill that hole. It's hardly um, surprising that so many people have it, given its ubiquity. And even um, your description of fame as a broth, I would query. I think it's completely, I, I would say it's more like a synthetic saliva, a foaming synthetic saliva <laughs> made outside of the body. Um, <laughs> what, okay, I'm, okay. <laughs> well, why can't we agree that, yes, mine is a nutritionless broth, Yours is a foaming saliva made outside the body. Why can't we say that it's a, it's a saliva made outside the body consisting of a nutritionless broth? Why can't we agree? If why am I fighting with you? Why, am I, why is my ego now asserting itself <laughs> that I can't be wrong about the broth and that you have to give me some credence on the broth? You, you and I can't find some peace over this broth stroke synthetic saliva hydra that we're making right now with our minds. Then what hope is there in the Middle East? What hope is there in fragmented America? What hope is there in post-Brexit Britain? What hope is there that this coronavirus will lead to some kind of global awakening where we recognise we're living in synthetic systems, much like that synthetic saliva, which could never be compared to a broth, in my view. <laughs> 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 Damn you! Damn you, you won that round. All right, all right. I yield the floor. It is more, from now on, I will tell people it's a synthetic <laughs> saliva made outside the body. And uh, clearly that's why you're drinking so much water during this interview, is to create more of this synthetic saliva. I have a, a, a pot of, of uh, flavorless broth brewing in the corner, <laughs> which you can't see. 